Johnny was proud of his uncle because he'd fought in the Crimean War where the sabre cut had sliced an arm from the shoulder to the elbow where often after a night's sleep beside his horse his uncle's hair had been frozen to the ground Nurse Nightingale had bandaged up the wound with her own hand in the hospital at school tardy right. and his uncle too was a member of the Purple Lodge of the Orange Order a great thing to be Though his ma said, his da said, that it was just as foolish to duck your head before a picture of King Billy as it is before a picture of a saint. Johnny thrust his chest out and walked swiftly beside the lanky figure of his uncle, glancing now and again up at the soft dark brown eyes and his wide mouth stretching from ear to ear. And the snow white hair tumbling over his ears and falling over his forehead. Away in a tram up Nelson's pillow he went. But my and miles. The first man in the car kill, where the two tram horses were held by another. It's called a pulley up. It waits there to link itself in front of any tram wanting to mount the hill. Long Thomas Street, where his uncle pointed out St. Catherine's Church, where he said Robert Emmett had been hung, drawn and quartered for rebellion against the English. Is there a Roman Catholic church? asked Johnny. No, no, said Uncle Tom. It's a Protestant one. You think they'd hang a Roman Catholic rebel outside a Roman Catholic church? Asked Johnny. But poor, poor Emmett was a Protestant, Johnny. He was a Protestant. Now that's funny, said Johnny. For I remember the night of the illuminations, the conductor of the tram we were in. He was singing this song about someone called Wolf Town. I mean, Ma told me he was a Protestant too. Ah, he was. And Parnell. And Grattan. Not Bartandy too. They all seem to have been Protestants. Mom or Johnny. Going into this soft silence and thoughtful silence for some moments. Uh, what's drawn and quartered? He asked suddenly. Ah, said his uncle. When a man is hanged, they cut off his head and divide him up into four parts. And was that what was done to poor, poor Robert Emmett? It must have been, if that's what he was sentenced to. Uh, why was Robert Emmett a rebel, uncle? Ah, I suppose he didn't like to have the English here. Why English, uncle? We've never seen any English knocking about round here. The soldiers, Johnny. The English soldiers. What, is it Tom and Mick, you mean? No, no. Not Tom and Mick. They're not English. They're Irish. But they're soldiers, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know they're soldiers. They're Irish soldiers, they know. Aren't they? That's what they are, aren't they, uncle? Same as you when you fought in the Crimea. Uh, well, uh, no, no, not Irish soldiers. Uh, well, well, what sort of soldiers are they? English. English soldiers, really. Then Emma must have wanted to get them out of the country as well as the others, if they're English soldiers. But Mick and Tom are Irish. So you couldn't be English soldiers. We're Irish, but we joined the army to fight for England, see? But why fight for England, uncle? Uh, simply because it's our country, that's all. Me ma says, me dad says it isn't. But that Ireland's our country, and he was a scholar, and he knew almost, almost everything. So it isn't, you see? Uncle Tom stroked his chin glancing at Johnny, soft big brown eyes, but he looked puzzled. Isn't what? What isn't what? He said. That England's not a country at all, and that everyone here is Irish. Well, so do you, said Uncle Tom. Well, went on Johnny, if Mick and Tom are Irish, how can they be English soldiers? Because they fight for England. Can't you understand? But why do they? Ah, 
I'm waiting you for you for England, Uncle. I had to, hadn't I? How had you? Because I was in the English army, I'm not going after telling you, said his uncle, a little impatiently. Yeah, but who made you, uncle? Who made me what? Fight for England! Good God, boy, don't you know your Bible? Uncle Tom took a fat-headed pipe out of his pocket. He was about to light and then he realised that he can't smoke on the tram. He puts it back in again. Johnny felt that his uncle was puzzled and a little cross because he was puzzled. So he sat there silent. And for a few moments he's looking out the tram window, thinking to himself, how hard it was to get anything out of grown-ups unless they had a book in their hand. He wanted to know these things. He felt he must know.